bright good morning to one and all present here. I am Dr. S. Sajida Begum, Assistant Professor, Vinayaga Mission Sankaracharya Dental College. I am from the Department of Prosthodontics and Crown and Bridge. Today, we are going to see about two important concepts in dental materials. One is on strengthening of ceramics. The second is going to be on casting defects. So these are some of the important topics which students find it difficult to understand both at the UG level and at the PG preparation level. So I thought we will basically discuss briefly about these two concepts. So let us get into the first topic of today which is going to be on strengthening of ceramics. Okay. So before understanding about the strengthening of ceramics first we must know what the basic constituents of this dental ceramics is. Dental ceramics basically has two phases. It has a glassy phase which is going to act as the matrix and to this glassy phase we are going to add crystals which are going to be dispersed within this glass matrix. So you call it as a crystalline phase and the basic constituents of this ceramics if you see it has feldspar which is the basic glass former or the matrix. Secondly, you have kaolin which is the green stage binder. Third, you have quartz which acts as a refractory filler as well as acts as the opacifier. You have alumina and borax. So these basically act as additional glass formers. They also act as flux. You have alkalis which are modifiers and then you have coloring pigments and then you have various other opacities to alter the translucency or transparency of the ceramics. Okay. And you can classify the ceramics into various types based on various classifications, how it is been processed, how its microcrystal structure is and what its firing temperature is and so on. But I am going to limit myself to this one classification which is going to be based on microstructure because this is how uh, the strengthening of the ceramics is going to be affected. So if you see the microstructure you can classify them into three types you have a glass and then you have crystal and then you have a crystal containing glass. So as you can see in the figures here this is a plain glass okay and to this glass various particles in the form of crystals are added to modify the crystalline structure and then you have fully crystalline. So based on how much crystals are being dispersed inside this glass matrix the strength of ceramics is going to be altered and how much glass is replaced is going to alter the aesthetics of the ceramics. Yes. So now how do we strengthen this ceramics? Now there are basically two ways by which we can strengthen ceramics. The first method is you are going to introduce a compressive stress. You are going to introduce a compressive stress within the ceramics okay, and that is how you are going to prevent it from breaking. And the second one is uh, say a crack has propagated. Now you are going to uh, interrupt this crack within the material through certain means. So now we will see as to how we are going to do these two. Fine. So first as I told you we are going to introduce residual compressive stress within the material and how you can do it is you have three ways. First method is by chemical tempering. Chemical tempering by means of ionic exchanges. So this is one of the ways by which we can introduce compressive stress within the material. Like say uh, this glass which is going to contain sodium ions. We are going to immerse it inside an electrolytic bath which is going to have potassium nitrate. So by doing that what happens is the sodium ions within the glass they are going to be replaced by the potassium ions which are much bigger. They are bigger in size by around 35 percentage and because of this increase in size of the ions okay there is increase in stress within the material. But one disadvantage with this chemical tempering is that uh, say you uh, polish the surface, you polish the surface of the ceramic which has been chemically tempered, it will get eroded off. This potassium ions will be there only on the superficial surface say around 100 microns. So beyond that it gets eroded. Okay. So the second method by which we are going to increase the compressive stress within the material is by thermal tempering. So in thermal tempering what we do is we rapidly cool the surface of the object when it is very hot or in the molten state. So by doing so what happens is the outer layer it is going to cool much faster when compared to your inner core layer which is going to be much more molten and hot. 
okay so when you're going to immerse it in water the outer layer which is going to cool very rapidly will not uh, have any stress within but whereas the inner core layer which is still molten which is going to cool much slower will introduce a compressive stress stress within the material fine so this is one way of increasing the compressive stress the third method is by altering the coefficient of thermal expansion so the basic concept is that you are going to add ceramic layer by layer. When you are going to add ceramic layer by layer, the basic concept is that there has to be a slight mismatch in the coefficient of thermal expansion between these two layers. The inner layer should have a slightly higher coefficient of thermal expansion. So by doing so, what happens is when you add an outer layer, which is going to have a coefficient of thermal expansion, which is less than that of the inner layer, on contraction, the inner layer is going to contract more and as a result what happens is the, there is going to be a compressive stress within the material. So that is how we are going to introduce compressive stress within. The second method I told you by which we can increase the strength of ceramics is by preventing the crack propagation. So how do you pro prevent the crack from propagating? You have to basically make the material strong and how do you make the material strong? By dispersing crystalline uh, matrix within the glass matrix. So you can add leucite, you can add lithium disilicate, alumina, magnesia alumina, spinel, zirconia, tetrasilicic uh, fluoromica. So all these are various crystals which uh, are added to this ceramic to increase the strength of ceramic. Okay. And another method by means of uh, uh, strengthening ceramics is interrupting the crack propagation. How do you interrupt crack propagation? So one is transformation toughening. Okay. So what you do is to the ceramic you will be adding yttrium stabilized zirconia particles. So this zirconia particles the basic concept you have to understand about the zirconia particles is that zirconia which is basically in a monoclinic phase when you heat it to say about 1100 degrees Celsius it is going to go from monoclinic to the tetragonal state and from the tetragonal if you are going to heat it say about 2000 degrees Celsius it is going to go to the cubic phase. On cooling this zirconia from the tetragonal phase will keep coming back to its monoclinic phase and during that there can be a volume uh, increase about 3 to 5 percentage and this can alter the properties of zirconia. So what we do is we are stabilizing this zirconia and how do we stabilize the zirconia by adding yttrium. So when yttrium is added to zirconia what happens even though you are going to cool the zirconium back from the heated state it will not get transformed to the monoclinic phase it will be stabilized in its tetragonal phase itself so when such kind of zirconia is added to the ceramics what happens say if that material is cracking okay there is going to be a crack which is propagated uh, what will happen is when there is a crack the region where the crack is propagating this atrium stabilized zirconia will transform itself from the tetragonal state to the monoclinic state only in the regions of stress. So what happens only in those regions the particle size will increase and as a result because of this 3 to 5 percent increase in volume or increase in the cell size you will have a closure of the crack and the crack will uh, be stopped from propagating. So this is another method of strengthening of ceramics. Okay? So what are the other means by which we can strengthen ceramics? One is fabrication techniques, uh, proper fabrication techniques have to be followed. You have to use as much minimum firing cycles as possible and as I told you there has to be a mismatch in the coefficient of thermal uh, expansion between the layers of ceramic which you are adding over top of another and the substrates which you are adding to the ceramics has to be stronger. Okay, You should have a stronger and tougher substrate and the design what you are giving like say the tooth preparation what you are doing for in the tooth to receive the crown okay that has to have an optimal design there has to be sufficient thickness and sufficient bulk there has to be a broader radii of curvature in the gingival, uh, gingival embrasure fine so here in the diagram you can see that there has to be sufficient amount of incisal reduction there has to be a sufficient amount of gingival reduction and uh, in the second diagram you can see that the occlusal reduction has to be suffi sufficient say about 2 mm around okay only then you will have sufficient bulk of the ceramic in that region and it will be prevented from chipping or cracking 
so now we have understood about this concept of strengthening of ceramics so now let us see about some of the important questions which have been asked in the neat examination or various other uh, national uh, examinations for pg entrance so one such important question which has been asked under such topic is chemical tempering here we can see the question is chemical tempering in porcelains is done to interrupt crap propagation by so you are given four choices transformation toughening dispersion of crystalline phase inducing residual compressive strength all of the above so the answer for this chemical tempering is that the answer is residual compressive strength has to be induced okay so by chemical tempering where we are going to introduce potassium ions which is going to replace the sodium ions it is going to increase the residual compressive strength second question let us see which among the following is not a method to strengthen ceramics first three layer laminate technique yes it is definitely a method because we are going to add it layer by layer with a mismatch in the coefficient of thermal expansion second stiffer supporting materials yes stiffer supporting materials again has to be done to strengthen the ceramics third higher thermal coefficient of expansion of ceramic as compared to metal substrate no this cannot be the answer because i told you always the inner layer should have a more uh, coefficient of thermal expansion when compared to the outer layer so naturally the metal substrate should have a more coefficient of thermal expansion so option c is wrong here option d minimize the number of porcelain firing cycles yes so the firing cycles have to be as much minimum as possible to increase the strength of ceramics so for this question uh, option c is the answer another question is when porcelain is baked against metal it should possess a higher fusion expansion no it should have a low, lower fusion expansion higher fusion temperature no okay third option linear coefficient of thermal expansion less than but close to that of metal yes so that is right the option d which is linear coefficient of thermal expansion greater than but close to that of the metal would be wrong because i told you the inner layer should have a higher coefficient when compared to the outer layer so the apt answer would be option c chemical method of strengthening porcelain involves exchange of aluminum and sodium ions exchange of aluminum and potassium ions exchange of sodium and potassium ions none of the above so answer is obviously exchange of sodium and potassium ions because glass contains sodium ions and not aluminum ions to prevent porosity in dental porcelain it should be baked in presence of air in vacuum for longer period under pressure so here the apt uh, answer would be in vacuum because always firing in vacuum or under reduced pressure always prevents or reduces porosities firing for a longer time can cause the change in the leucite content and will produce stress which will result in introduction of crack within the ceramics so with this we have completed the first concept which is strengthening of ceramics today the second topic we are going to see is about casting defects so what is casting defects any errors which is going to occur in the casting procedure is going to result in a defective casting so this we call it as casting defects and uh, this casting defect has been classified by various authors we will limit ourselves to the classification by philips so he has classified this casting defects into distortion surface roughness and irregularities porosities incomplete or missing details and based on location you can classify this defects into internal and external uh, defects so now we are going to see about each defect as to why it occurs and how it can be prevented the first defect we'll see is about distortion so what is distortion and when it can occur distortion will naturally occur when you are going to distort the wax pattern when the wax pattern is distorted you are going to have a distortion defect okay and how you can minimize it is you should be very careful in handling your wax pattern you have to apply minimum amount of pressure you have to manipulate the wax at a high temperature okay and you have to invest the pattern invest the pattern as soon as you make as soon as the wax pattern is made it has to be immediately invested and in case it is necessary to store the wax pattern see to it that you are storing it in the refrigerator 
दिस इज हाउ यू कैन प्रिवेंट डिस्ट्रॉशन द सेकेंड मोस्ट कॉमन डिफेक्ट इज सर्फेस रफनेस और इरेगुलरिटीज सो वॉट इज सर्फेस रफनेस एनी चेंजेस इन टर्म्स ऑफ हाइट विथ एंड डायरेक्शन ओके ऑफ द पैटर्न इट इज गोइंग टू रिजल्ट इन सर्फेस रफनेस बट वेर एज सर्फेस इरेगुलरिटीज इज इम्परफेक्शंस इन द फॉर्म ऑफ नॉड्यूल्स which are not characteristics of the entire surface area in certain regions you might have nodule so this is called surface irregularities okay and why this occurs because the surface irregularities are much more prominent why because of the particle size of the investment as well as the ability to produce the pattern in microscopic details so even though the wax pattern is going to have very minimal amount of roughness and irregularities it is going to be manipulated more in your casting okay the third one is air bubbles so any small nodules on the castings so you see very very small minute nodules as you can see in the picture here so these nodules how they occur it is mainly because of the air bubbles which get attached to the surface during the investment procedure okay you're not doing uh, you're not doing vibration properly and there are air bubbles within the investment that is going to be uh, replicated as nodules in your casting so what you have to do is you have to do a proper technique of investment okay apply uh, do vibration and then uh, do vacuum mixing okay apply the wetting agent properly okay so that uh, there is no any air entrapment within the investment so this is how you have to prevent the uh, nodules from occurring on the surface of the casting because of the air bubbles so next is water films so when uh, there is any water which is present in the investment that will prevent the investment from attaching itself properly to the wax pattern so in such cases what happens is you will uh, get this fins and ridges like how you see in the picture here so you can get defects like this when there is water film left within the investment and when this will occur like you are not using proper wetting agent okay or you are not using correct liquid powder ratio because when the liquid powder ratio is too high also you can get these types of defects in your castings next is heating rate when you rapidly heat what happens again that can result in formation of fins and spines in the casting because when the heating is more the investment undergoes flaking when there is flaking the molten metal can enter into all these ridges and cracks which develop and you can have these fins so what you have to do is you have to heat it gradually uh, at least 60 minutes from room temperature to 700 degree celsius and uh, you have to have a greater bulk of the investment and uh, heat it more slowly so next defect is because of underheating when you don't heat it properly what happens the wax does not get eliminated fully and when the wax does not get eliminated fully it just leaves a residue behind and because of that that region will not be replaced by the molten metal fine so the next uh, important cause for a casting defect is prolonged heating when you heat it for a prolonged time what happens there is decomposition or disintegration of the investment and uh, what happens you have sulfurous compounds being released and this get coated over the casting and that will prevent the casting from reacting to the pickling what we do so all these can cause casting defect so heating temperature is also very important you cannot heat it at a very low temperature you can't heat it at a very high temperature next causing this casting defect is foreign bodies and uh, what can become the foreign body any pieces of investment which is left behind okay or any bits of carbon from the flux what we have been using or any sulfur compounds which have been released because of increasing the temperature to a very high level so all these can cause some foreign bodies within the material and this foreign bodies within the casting can give rise to sharp well defined deficiencies okay because in these regions where the foreign bodies are there the molten metal will not flow so those regions you will have defect next the other cause for casting defect is pattern position okay like the wax pattern say you have multiple units and uh, the wax patterns are placed too close to each other then the molten metal might not flow properly into the all the mold spaces so that can be one reason the second reason is uh, if all the patterns are placed in the same plane okay then there is no equal dispersion of the molten metal into these mold spaces okay so it's always necessary that you 
give at least 3 mm of gap between each wax pattern. Next is alloy. The molten alloy which is going to flow inside this mold space that is going to also influence in your casting. How? Okay. So, what you can do is you have to do a proper amount of proper uh, method of sprueing. You have to place the sprue at exactly 45 degrees and not at 90 degrees. So, all these will prevent the bulk of molten alloy from being forced into the mold space. Fine. The second, uh, the other cause is carbon inclusions, either from the carbon crucible which have which we have been using, okay, or uh, the investment might contain carbon or sometimes the torch you are not adjusting properly. So, that can be absorbed by the alloys. So, all these can result in carbon inclusions within the casting. So, that will again ma manifest itself as a casting defect. So, next is porosities. You can have numerous porosities in the casting and these porosities again is being classified. You can classify this porosities based on its etiology. Be you can classify them based on three causes. First is solidification defects, okay. second because of the gases which is present within the casting, third is because of air which gets trapped inside the mold and because of the solidification defects you can have three different types of porosities, localized shrinkage porosity or in other words it is called as shrink spot, you have suck back porosity and then you have micro porosity. Because of gases, you can have pinhole porosities, gas inclusion porosities and subsurface porosities. Lastly, because of the air which is trapped inside the mold, you have back pressure porosity. So, we will see about each in detail. First, let us see about the porosities caused because of the solidification defects. I told you we have three important porosities which occur because of solidification defects. First, it is the localized shrinkage porosity. Okay. So, it is caused mainly by the premature termination of the molten metal during solidification. Say the molten metal is not reaching till the terminal point of the wax pattern, you might have this localized shrinkage porosity. So, why it occurs? When it can occur? When the diameter of the sprue is too uh, narrow or the length of sprue is too long. So, the molten metal before it is reaching the wax pattern itself, it solidifies okay? or you do not have a reservoir. So, because when there is no reservoir, what happens? The, there is no sufficient molten metal to flow into the entire wax pattern or when the sprue is entirely at 90 degrees. So, because of the increased force it flows and the sprue uh, might get distorted. Okay. So, because of all these causes, you might have localized shrinkage porosities. So, how you place the sprue is also very important in preventing this kind of porosity. So, here in this we can see the diagram how the sprue is being placed. Okay. So, what are the factors we have to consider while we are attaching a sprue? It has to be placed at the thickest portion. The sprue has to be attached to the thickest portion of the wax pattern and it should be attached at 45 degree angles and there has to be a minimum distance of 6 mm from the top of the casting uh, ring to where the wax pattern ends. There has to be at least 6 mm distance okay? and uh, you have to flare the sprue at the point of attachment and if possible you can place a reservoir close to the attachment. So, the terminal point, so after the metal flows through this mold space, when the metal shrinks, you have uh, molten metal from the reservoir to compensate for the shrinkage which occurs here at this point. So, the second porosity we are going to see is suck back porosity. So, this is a kind of external void which you can see on the inside of the crown exactly opposite to the sprue. A hot spot is created by the hot metal which impinges on the mold wall near the sprue okay? and this hot spot it is going to freeze last. Because the sprue is already solidified, you will see that no molten material will be available to fill this hot spot. So, because of that you might have suck back porosities. So, where you will see the suck back porosity usually at the occluso axial or inciso axial line angle. So, you can see here in the diagram this is how a uh, sprue is been attached to the wax pattern. Okay. So, here you might have the hot spot because it is this region which is going to be hot for a longer time and so 
when it freezes last you should have metal flowing from a reservoir to compensate for that shrinkage if you don't do that then you're going to have a void there so how you can prevent is you have to flare the point of sprue attachment and reduce the temperature between the mold and the molten alloy it cannot be too hot okay so this amount of flaring here is important next is microporosities so microporosities are kind of fine irregular voids which are there within the casting they occur because of the rapid solidification of the alloy when the mold or the casting temperature is too low because naturally when the temperature is too low it solidifies faster and you can have microporosities so next because of gases we are going to have porosities the first type is pinhole porosities okay both pinhole and gas inclusion porosities are almost same characterized by spherical contour but however gas inclusion porosities are much larger in size when compared to your pinhole porosities because as we all know when the metals when they are uh, in the molten state they absorb several gases and so on solidification these are going to expel these gases for example copper and silver is dissolve oxygen platinum and palladium dissolves hydrogen gas so also it can be caused by the gases which are occluded from a poorly adjusted torch flame or by the use of oxidizing zone in the torch and not the reducing zone so casting what it happens is it becomes blackish because of these porosities next is you have subsurface porosities the subsurface porosity is caused by the simultaneous nucleation of solid grains and gas bubbles the first moment the alloy freezes at the mold walls okay so how you can prevent the subsurface porosity is you have to control the rate at which the molten metal is entering the mold you can't have it at 90 degrees because when you have it at 90 degrees the molten metal is going to flow at a much faster rate and that can result in subsurface porosities next is back pressure porosities okay this back pressure porosity is because of the air which gets trapped inside the mold space this is sometimes referred to as entrapped air porosity this is usually found on the outer surface of the casting when the casting or mold temperature is too low the solidification occurs before the air can escape through the space as the metal molten metal is flowing through the mold space the air which is trapped inside has to come out okay but sometimes it is not able to come out because the temperature is too low fine so as a result the before the air can escape itself you have the molten metal entering inside so because of that you can have back pressure porosities okay so how you can do is you have to do a proper burn out fine so that the entire wax has been eliminated you should have a sufficiently high casting pressure and proper liquid powder ratio has to be followed in the investment what we are using okay and the thickness of the investment between the tip of the pattern and on the and the end of the ring should not be greater than 6 mm so i uh, previously showed you a image so like that there has to be a minimum thickness of 6 mm the distance can't be much more because when the distance is more the air will not be able to pass out through the investment so uh, the distance has to be around 6 mm and not more okay and another casting defect is incomplete casting 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 itself is incomplete you have rounded margins so here you can see instead of the sharper margins you have a much rounder margin so this is the discrepancy you can see and this why why it occurs it can occur because of several reasons you can have insufficient venting okay insufficient casting pressure insufficient elimination of wax okay the liquid powder ratio was very low or the metal uh, viscosity is not proper or the sprue had some blockage because of some foreign bodies or carbon inclusions or the occluded gases were not able to escape out properly so because of all these many reasons you can have incomplete casting okay so sometimes the casting is too bright and shiny that is because you have not eliminated the wax properly and sometimes the casting is too small 
that is because of inadequate expansion of the mole cavity and the impression what you have taken could have shrunk okay because of shrinkage of impression or the mole cavity didn't expand properly and when when this error will occur when you have not used the proper liquid powder ratio in your investment then such errors can occur next is black casting the casting becomes entirely black this is because of the sulfur contents which get released because of the increase in temperature also when the wax is not completely eliminated you can have a black casting okay so these are some of the common defects which we see and how they occurred so now let us see a very few questions which have been asked in pg entrance in relation to these topics the first question is glossy smooth margins of the casting or cast due to shrinkage of alloy on cooling investment breakdown incomplete wax elimination incomplete gas elimination so answer is naturally incomplete wax elimination because wax always gives this glossy smooth appearance second question is subsurface porosity subsurface porosity can be decreased by option a decreasing the sprue length option b decreasing the sprue option c increasing the melting temperature answer option d increasing the mold temperature so answer is option b which is decreasing the sprue thickness yes so sub subsurface porosity as we all know is because of the rapid entry of molten uh, metal into the mold so how you can reduce is by you increasing the sprue length and by reducing the sprue thickness and mold metal temperature so by doing so you can reduce this subsurface porosity third is back pressure porosity i told you back pressure porosity is because of the air which gets entrapped okay so how you can avoid you have option a asbestos liners option b placing sprue at least 1 quarter inch away from the end of the casting ring option c preventing rapid heating of the investment in burnout oven option d short and a wide sprue the proper answer for this is option b which is placing the sprue at least 1 quarter inch away from the end of the casting ring so that it will prevent all the air uh, it will uh, allow all the air from inside to escape out so the answer for back pressure porosity question would be option b fourth question air bubbles formed on the surface of the casting is probably due to so air bubbles option a could is improper casting pressure option b improper heating of the investment option c improper angulation of sprues option d improper wetting of the wax pattern by the investment so answer is as we have previously discussed it is improper wetting of the wax pattern by the investment which will give rise to air bubbles which will manifest itself as nodules on the surface of casting the fifth question is disadvantage of having a short sprue option a rapid solidification of metal option b no place for reservoirs option c incomplete evacuation of gases option d difficulty in removing casting from investment so the answer would be incomplete evacuation of gases because when you have a very short sprue the distance of that 6 mm cannot be maintained it will be much more so as a result the air will be prevented from escaping out of the investment so the answer is option c next is suck back porosity suck back porosity is due to option a attached impurities on under surface of casting option b hot spot option c no rapid cooling option d inadequate melting temperature so obviously the answer is hot spot because suck back suck back porosity occurs because of the hot spot at the region of attachment of the sprue to the wax pattern because that region forms the hot spot and that is the region which is going to freeze last so you should always have molten metal from the reservoir to compensate for this uh, shrinkage which occurs at that junction otherwise you can have a suck back porosity the last question we are going to see is uh, gases dissolved in molten metal or liberated when cooled giving rise to suck back porosity gas inclusion porosity localized shrinkage porosity and micro porosity so because of gases the porosities which is going to occur is either pinhole porosities or gas inclusion porosities so option uh, answer is option b which is gas inclusion porosities with this we are coming to the end of this topic so hope you are clear with this concepts of porosities in the casting and also the strengthening of ceramics thank you for your patient listening
Thank you.